Hey developers, today we're gonna look at render functions. Now render functions are really a powerful construct in Vue.js. Allows us to really create Vue apps without using our template tags. And it's really what Vue does underneath the covers with vNodes. So we're gonna look at render functions. We're gonna do a quick example. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Also, if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also big into Vue. If you guys like Vue content, I have a link below. You can actually get the first chapter of my book for free and also you get a ton of information about Vue. I'll, give, I'll notify you every time we have a new video out. So make sure you click on that link and sign up. Let's take a look at render functions. Now render functions are a way to create Vue apps without actually using the template tag. So normally we put all our HTML inside this template tag. We might use some V4 and, and VF directives and use a bunch of interpolation. However, we can actually do all that using a render function. It's actually a little bit more complicated, but let's take a look. I believe this template tag is converted over to V nodes, which are essentially what we're doing when we create a render function. It's kind of similar to what Vue does underneath the hood when it takes our templates and converts them over. So the way it works, I went ahead and created a brand new app. I do have this props for this message, but I just have this hello world here. Let's see if we can recreate the hello world with using render functions. So first thing we need to do is delete the template at the top. And now we have a big blank screen. There's nothing on there. So instead of having a template, we're going to use this render function here. And it's going to have one argument that's going to be sent to it. And that's called create element. Now this create element, you can name it whatever you want. I think create element makes the most sense because this is how we're going to create our render function. Now, the create element, what we do here is we actually return the create element and it has three parameters to it. First, and you can see right here that Vue.js is smart enough to understand. The first is the tag. So we can actually add a tag in here. The second is any like props, um, anything that you want to kind of pass to it, like attributes would be here. And then the third one would be like the children. So let, let's so, see a real example. So I'm going to do H1. And now I'm going to pass in the second parameter, which is the attributes, which I'm just going to put an empty attribute. And now I'm going to actually put the children or the value it's supposed to be. So I'm going to put hello world. So if I did this correctly, it should display hello world. Cool. So it went ahead and created this hello world on the page here. So that's pretty neat. Now you're probably thinking, well, how useful is this? Well, what happens if we wanted to dynamically change this? You can see right here, if we click on it, it's an H1. Once if we wanted to dynamically change this from an H1 to something else. And by the way, there's errors here. But if I clear it and go back to and refresh it, there's no errors. Just want to show you that that's the case. So you can see this is an H1. Now I have this message being passed in. It's not quite what we want, but let's say we change this to a tag. And then we go back to our, our home view. And you see here we're passing in a message. What if we pass in tag and have equal H3? Well, obviously nothing happens right now, but instead of having this first parameter, remember this first one is always like the tag and the second one is the attributes and the third is, is children or the value of it. So one stuff, instead of switching, putting this H1 here, we put in this dot tag. So now you can see here, it actually changed it to an H3 and it's a lot smaller. If I go back up to the home view, and I change it to, I don't know, an H5. You see it's even smaller and it changed to H5 here. Once if I want to do a span. So now it's a span instead of a, a H, H attribute. So you can see you can kind of dynamically create elements or our tags through here. Let's say we wanted to display a list, like a, an unordered list of values. So I'm going to create a data object here. And then inside this data object, I'm going to return a list of names. And that's just going to have a few names, Eric, Susan, Vivian. And I'll make sure I put a comma here. And I'll save it. 
Now I want to list these in here. Now normally, if you typically were doing this with templates, it might look like something like this. You might have a v4, and then you might go equals name in names, and then you would sign it a key, and then you would kind of do it that way. But we don't have access to the v4 since we are using uh, since we're using this render or this render function. We're using create element. So instead, we had to kind of uh, kind of form it a different way. So the way I like to do it, let's say we, we still want this hello world at the top. So let's keep this here. But instead, we're going to return a new object, new create element. And this time, we're going to do a div tag. Because I kind of want to surround everything by a div tag. And as we know with view 2, you actually have to have one root component, uh, one root tag. So we're going to have our div tag kind of have it be encompassing everything inside here. And then inside the div tag, I'm going to send it an empty attribute. And now this one, I told you this could be like the what you're going to display here, or it could also be the children could be an array. So this is an array of values. So let's say with the first one we want to have in here is the create element. And we'll have a comma here. So let's first see if it still works. Cool, it still works. And I'm going to go back here and change this to from a span, I don't know, to back to each one, make it a little bigger. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to iterate over this names. So how would I do that? So the easiest way, I do another create element, create element. And this time I want to have a UL. I'm going to have unordered list. I'm not going to have any parameters sent to it. And then I'm going to do this dot names, dot names, if I can type it right, names. I'm going to use a map. And this will essentially iterate through everything. And I can change the, each one of the values and have it be returned differently. So I'm going to have a name. I'm going to do an arrow function here. And this is going to return our create element. And the create element is going to have an li. It's not going to have any attributes. And now I'm going to use a little string interpolation and send a name to it. So let's see if that works. Cool, so now we have essentially created the hello world. It's, this is all surrounded by a div tag. And we're using our unordered list. And we're sending Eric, Susan, and Vivian. What happens if we want to change this hello world to, I don't know, to be a different color? So we could do that too. There's a whole bunch of values you can do here in this attributes. So in this one, we can do ATTRS. And this is the same thing. You, by the way, these are called V nodes, like I was saying earlier. And you could, this is essentially any attributes that you want to add to the element. So we know class is one of them. So let's create a one called header. So of course it's a colon, not, there we go. But we don't see any change yet because we haven't actually added any classes. So we're going to create one called header. And then instead of header, we're going to just change the color to blue. So now we have the hello world is blue. So that's awesome. Uh, we could, there's also a few more that are interesting, like, uh, let me see here, there's style. So instead of, maybe we, this is like just adding the style tag. So maybe we want to do, I don't know, font size, let's say 56 pixels. So now, that, now it's really big. So it added that style tag to it and it made it really big. Um, that's that's essentially it for render functions that we're going to look at right now. All right, let me show you guys one more thing related to render functions. You can use render functions for HTML elements like we just saw, but you can actually use them with components too. So I think this is really important because it's kind of an interesting way of doing it. So I have the same example we did in our last video with this hello world text. Remember, we can always change this. I don't know if you want it to be span. I just type in span here, and now it's a little bit smaller. If I go back to the hello world, I did 56 pixels here. I don't know. Maybe I make it 22 pixels instead. So it's a little bit smaller. That's all fine. But what happens if I want to recreate this? This is in our home view. I want to use this. I want to go ahead and change this over so it's using a render function instead. So yeah, well, let's try the, let's try to do that. So I'm going to leave the template up there for a second while I'm writing the render function so I remember what's in there. So I'm going to do a create element here. And now I remember we have to return an element. So I'm going to return create element. 
Remember, we have three values. The first one's the tag, and then any options that we send it, or attributes. And then the third one is uh, the value, or if you're having any children inside of it. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a div. So we'll have a div. And then we have some attributes. I mean, if you want to be semantic, we actually have a class home on here, even though it's not technically doing anything. But I can do attributes here and then add a class home. Guess, yep, that's home. And then the third one is the values. And we actually want to, this time, um, we actually are going to put the hello world in here. So I'm going to create another array. And we'll just make sure I have this correct here. Oops, I actually need one more closing bracket. There we go. And then inside here, we're going to do another create element. Well, let's just save it here, make sure we have it OK. We have too many elements in here. Um, unexpected token. I think we have too many. values here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the render function. And I'm going to leave our template up there just to remember what we're doing. So we're going to have a render here. And we're going to do create element. And now this create elements, we're going to return it. And remember, it has three it has three parameters. One is the tag name or the component name, which we'll talk about in a second. We also have attributes. And then the final one is either the values or the children. So we want to create a div here. Now for the second one, we actually want to use, I guess to be perfect, we can add this class home on there. So we'll put adders here. We'll have a class equals home, call home. And then after this, we're going to have the, the children. So I'm going to create a empty array here. And I'm going to create a create element. Now this create element is going to be our hello world. So we're going to do hello world. And now we want the attributes. So this one, there's actually one called props. It's kind of hard to see here. But you can actually, there's one called props. And this is any of the properties that we're passing into it. So in this case, we know we need to pass in tag. So we'll call it tag. And we'll pass in, I guess we're right now we're passing in span. And then finally, we want the values, um, if we have any values inside of it. And right now, there's really nothing in between the closing and ending brackets of the hello world. It's just it's self-closing. So this should be everything we need. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now I'm going to delete this template at the top and see if it still works. Cool, so it still works. And just to make sure I'm not, I'm right, I'm going to change this to an H1. Cool, you can see it changed to an H1. It looks like it's working correctly. So this is kind of neat. And by the way, we still have this components here. Look, we can actually delete this because this components is only really used if you're using the template. So I can delete the components. I didn't have to declare it. Now everything is done through the render function itself. And so this is where you, and since we're using a hello world here, we can now grab props, but we can also grab slope, uh, scope slots and things like that, which we'll see later on when we use renderless functions. But it's a really powerful construct. So we can hit, if we do on here, we can actually create um, events here. These are events that will do something in our app. So what happens if anytime you clicked inside this div tag, that we had like a pop-up, an alert pop-up. So from on here, we can do click. So we know that's a click handler. And then we can just have uh, a, a function here, an, an arrow function. And from there, we'll just do alert test. So let's see if that works. So now if I click anywhere here, I get a little test window that opens up because I've added this click handler to this div tag that will display when anything, anything, uh, anytime you click on it anywhere. So that's essentially how you create components here.